Welcome to the Brainy 8 Show, where we talk about all things Salesforce, sharing the coolest features, solutions, and best practices to turn you into a Salesforce rock star. Here's your host, former attorney turned Salesforce consultant and trainer, David Giller. Welcome, everyone. Uh, so for those of you who have not joined one of these sessions before, uh, this is uh, an open mic. There is no hardcore agenda. There is no presentation of any kind. This is meant to be a completely spontaneous interactive discussion. And today we're going to be focusing on some of the struggles of what it's like to work as a remote Salesforce admin. And Look, for myself, I've been working remotely for many years now, not exclusively remote. I first started gradual where I was working, a, I'll call it a hybrid of working remote some of the time and going to the office some of the time. And then gradually the working from home <laughs> took up more and more of uh, my working environment. And uh, there are definitely, it's not always as easy as people think. And now that we're all struggling with the coronavirus crisis, many of us have been thrown into this environment, whether we like it or not. And for a lot of people, it's a real struggle. For a lot of people, it's a struggle just for themselves, for their own self-discipline. It's a struggle from a hardware, software perspective. It's a struggle from a home environment logistic perspective uh, where I don't really have the space where it's quiet or isolated kind of stuff. And uh, there's definitely the struggle from a company culture perspective where if others are not used to someone being remote, they don't, your colleagues might not know how to really interact with you when you're remote. And then there's everything associated with getting the work done as a Salesforce admin, gathering the business requirements and doing the configuration. How do you prove uh, your worth to the organization that people shouldn't forget about you just because you, they don't necessarily see you, especially in an environment like now that sadly I'm very familiar with uh, you know, living through uh, an environment where jobs are getting lost, where there, there, uh, there are layoffs that are happening. And you sort of feel even more so that you need to prove your worth to the organization before you get, uh, you get cut or even more so if there's, even if there's nothing to do yet right now at the moment, you want to feel productive. You don't want to be sitting and twiddling your thumbs, just waiting for that pink slip to land on your lap. So you guys tell me, what do you want to talk about as it relates to, there are lots of different areas that we could focus on. You tell me, what is it that you're struggling with as it relates to working remote as a Salesforce admin? And we're just going to take it from there. Like I said, open mic. It's up to you guys. What are you guys struggling with? You have to take yourselves off mute, by the way. <laughs> Actually, I'm not really struggling because this is part of what we do anyway is uh, our particular work is got to be remote. And in fact, uh, before it all started elsewhere, our uh, bosses said, hey, we're going to shut down offices and everybody's going to work remote. So I guess I'm here just in case someone has any other questions and maybe I can answer a few. Awesome. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate it. Look, I know for a lot of people, I'll, I'll tell you even for myself, as much as I'm used to working remote, as I mentioned before, for a long time, for me, the real struggle with it, even over the last couple of weeks has been not even in terms of me working remote, but suddenly I have the rest of my family around and suddenly the rest of my family, they are forced to be doing their own thing remote, whether it's uh, my kids as students, my wife is a preschool teacher, she's teaching kindergarten remote on Zoom, and suddenly they might have either, they need me as their tech support. How do I log into Zoom? How do I change my virtual background? How do I mute others? How do I turn off my camera? How do I share my screen? Uh, or even more challenging, can you keep your voice down? Because they can hear me in my class that I'm doing over here. So how are you guys dealing with some of that? Are, you, are any of you struggling with any of those kinds of issues? And how are you handling that? Doors. Lots of doors. <laughs> doors don't always help. My kids have warned me that, you know, Daddy, just because the door is closed, uh, you're still pretty loud. <laughs> yeah, our, our old house, there's like a two-inch gap at the bottom of every door. So that doesn't always help. Um, yeah. We just kind of find our own space. I mean, my daughter knows her room and my office share events she can't do schoolwork in her room yeah because um, i am in um i'm in my office and 
so she is usually downstairs. Um, but her teacher has been experimenting with a lot of tech and keeps sending emails like install this and and she gives instructions that are great for a PC, but my daughter's on a Chromebook. It's not the same. So half the time she's she's like trying and struggling. And I'm like, just bring it up here and I'll install it. Yeah, and that, that's a real struggle because it, uh, the student could be with a Chromebook, the student could be only working with an iPad or sometimes only with an iPhone or not even an iPhone. It could be an iPod, like not, it, it's, it's a real struggle that in the environment that we're in now, uh, especially with kids having to do remote learning and the parents in the household that are doing remote working, there's not necessarily a computing device for every member of the household to be using at the same time. And if, even if there are two computers or three computers, well, Usually it's the parents that are taking priority and maybe an older sibling that takes priority and the younger ones are like left with their own phone and that's it. So that could be a real struggle. The other aspect of course is also having um, a good enough internet service provider with enough speed so you can have this sort of thing. Uh, because when you get multiple devices on there that oh, will yeah. knock the bandwidth, I mean, you, everything will kind of knock down per unit. Uh, yeah. And on the one hand, it's, it's kind of funny. Like when you watch the YouTube videos or see memes of people making fun of like the typical conference call or, uh, you know, a video conference call where uh, the, the video is suddenly uh, frozen or the screen suddenly uh, stops working or something. But honestly, it's really frustrating. You're the Salesforce admin trying to gather business requirements or trying to teach, trying to teach people how to use new functionality, trying to teach sales reps how to log a call. And suddenly, whether it's your internet or their in internet that just completely stops, uh, or they're like, wait, are you showing something? And you have no idea. For all you know, they are the ones who are on their phone instead of a laptop, and they're only looking at your talking head. They're not, they don't even know how to be looking at your screen. Um, so yeah, to Jim's point, internet bandwidth can definitely be an issue. I'll tell you that for, for myself, uh, based on the scenario that I described just a moment ago, um, I think it was like last week or two weeks ago, I pulled out an ethernet cable that I really haven't used at all. And the same computer that I always use, typically just connected from Wi-Fi, I hooked it up, I wired it up, uh, you know, to be connected through ethernet because everyone else is using high bandwidth at the same time. And honestly, even if they're not in school, they're just streaming Netflix and I'm trying to work. So it could be a real struggle, real struggle. And Netflix is definitely a bandwidth hog. Yeah. Uh, we have three of three of us. I'm a liberal arts major, not a math major. We have three of us who are working from remote home. And uh, even though we're uh, more of a rural area, and so your choices are a lot fewer, we found a way to get a hold of two, or at least two connections, same ISP. And one is strictly for work, and the other one is for the regular household. That's one way we've yeah. resolved that. Yeah, that's definitely a great way of doing it. I am, I actually use, I'm not tapping into it right now, but I actually have uh, at home the Google Wi-Fi mesh network. Um, and what you can do with that is you can separate out like a guest network where we have a lot of guests coming by. And I realized that I can, I can give them a different, uh, a different network to tap into. So they're using uh, the internet is not interfering with our use of the internet at all. What's so, that called, David? Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head, but I can look it up and tell you. Oh, I thought you said the name Google. Oh, oh uh, the system that I'm using is it's the Google Wi-Fi. I don't know. Maybe you've been to Costco. They sell it in Costco. It's like these round, I, come, I think they come in sets of, either they come in sets of two or three. I bought the set of three. Um, at Costco, they also sell Netgear, has a competing one. It's called Orbi. I actually discovered it from my mother, who was really not that technical. And she's like, David, I bought this Orbi thing from Costco. Can you set it up for me? I'm like, what the hell's an Orbi? And I started looking it up. I'm like, oh, this is damn cool because your internet sucks at home. 
Yeah. <laughs> and it, it's incredibly easy to set up. It's essentially, it's a Wi-Fi extender. Yeah. That's where it is. I think I've heard of that. I was going to ask if people are, um, clearly we use Zoom. I was a join me user for a long time. And before that, a go to meeting user. Same. And before that, a something else. And WebEx. Yeah. I burn out on them all over time. But lately, it seems like mo a lot of people I know, both business and obviously now personal, are using Zoom. But is anyone using something other than Zoom? Because I feel like Zoom offered itself free to schools. And I mean, everybody in the world now is using Zoom. And sometimes I think it's the whole network is just bogged down. I'm curious if people are using other online conferencing. I asked Michelle, said for she's using Microsoft Teams for her online learning, which I think is cool. Um, I'm yeah. Also, the there's Google Hangouts. I can't stand Google Hangouts. Yeah. We used it for our user group last weekend. And while the, rec I will say this much, the recording quality was really good. It was? I, yeah. When I got, the recording was really good. Um, but I didn't like that when I'm presenting, I can't see what's going on. So I really needed someone to monitor everything for me while I was presenting. I see. I, I find... Um, there's one called Uber Conference, which is pretty good. And I like that one because you don't have to install anything. It's purely web-based. So you just need a browser. Is it easy to share a screen on that? It is, yep. My office has the paid version of Zoom meetings. And we have found that it's the most reliable of all the things that we have. We have Microsoft Teams. We have Skype. We have... Uh, go to meeting. We have a couple of things, and and even when I'm on presentations with other people, I'm finding that Zoom is the most reliable. Yeah. I know they had a couple of problems, so you had to change your security settings at one point because people on the Twitter were reporting that people oh, were yes. taking over their meetings. I hear some. I see some nods and yeses. Um, it's, uh, I, that. I didn't find those settings at all in mind, but if you, I have the, I had copied them down someplace. If somebody needs them, I can paste them in chat. Why don't you do that? I, I read about the security issues, but I haven't had any. Particularly security. for schools where yeah. you have super curious kids who are learning the technology before the adults even think of the features and they will hijack a classroom and so you have a teacher that's instructing and you have it could be a student or it could be the student simply shares with their friends who are not even students at the school they share with their friends a link to the zoom link to the particular class and then you have unfamiliar kids joining and sharing incredibly inappropriate they they have access to the screen share capability uh, by default, any participant can share their screen. That's how Zoom was made. However, the host can turn it off that only the host can share their screen. The other uh, thing is, and by the way, I witnessed this myself uh, the other day, where students can, or I should say participants, can annotate the screen. So I saw it was a school presentation, and the principal was showing something on the screen. He was showing, like, you know, photos of people and talking about the history of these people and their influence in society, and the kids are drawing the equivalent of graffiti all over the, the person's face. Nobody's paying attention to what the instructor, what the teacher is saying. Pretty bad. Yeah. The other thing, actually, I overheard this morning my wife had a staff meeting that she was in. She's, like I mentioned before, she's a preschool teacher. And uh, the head of her department basically <laughs> called out that they need to keep track, to keep a look at the, um, the participants' names because mm -hmm. kids will go ahead and rename themselves, like just the label of their name. So first of all, they could put in something like uh, Susan, the smartest one in the class, but they could put in all sorts of crude things in there also, just in the name. They get really creative. <laughs> so the settings in Zoom allow you to block them from changing names, allow you for to not allowing them to present, to do the graffiti. Also, you can enable wait rooms. The other thing that I ended up having to use for my Salesforce Saturday Sports. can lock people out. So you can get to a point in the meeting where you can say, hey, nobody else can join us. Yep. I'm locking this down. 
Yep. You can also set a password. Now at the same time, the kids can share or the participants can share passwords with other people. So there's, there's a lot uh, that you can do. The wonderful thing is that Zoom gives you, absolutely gives you as a host the features to take control and to lock down those things. By default, they're all open. Now keep in mind, as the host, all you have to do is have a little checklist for yourself and when appropriate, you log into the meeting a few minutes prior, you lock down all of those things at the onset of the meeting and you're basically good to go. But in the typical business world, you want those things to be open. Like when someone will log in, a lot of times it'll say things like uh, Bob's iPad and Bob wants to change his name, there might be more than one Bob at the meeting. He wants to change his name to, it should say Bob Smith, not Bob's iPad. Um, so you want, you want to allow people to do those things. But yeah, that could definitely be a challenge. Absolutely. So talk to me about some of the other challenges that you guys have as, as admins working remotely. Well, setting up the remote user group was a big deal. I've, I'm still dealing with it a couple times a day because I back up as the local IT for our inside sales team that we just said, hey, go home. And uh, if you have a PC, run Salesforce on it. If you don't have a PC, take the equipment home. And I, I literally had people who were trying to tether with a USB from their phone to do internet and then also run their dialer platform, their, their VoIP off of that. And I'm like, no, you, you can't do that. <laughs> go, go get an ethernet cable, plug into a hard line. Um, you know, or I, I found, um, you know, a little USB Wi-Fi adapter that they could do. Um, the other thing with, you know, just so many people having different, um, systems they're running on. Like someone mentioned earlier, the Google Chromebook, I was trying to do a uh, go to assist with one of my users today. And he's like, it says I can't run this. And I'm like, what system are you using? Chromebook doesn't let go to assist. Let me remote in to help him. Through a a lot of times they don't even realize that it's a Chromebook. A lot of times the Chromebooks are so advanced and they're just not technically savvy. They're just like, yeah, it's a laptop. I don't know. It's a brand new laptop. Got it from Best Buy. What do I know? Yeah. And so you, you have the hardware issues, but then you also have, you know, their day to day problems and, you know, where you, you could walk over and say, here, show me this. It takes a lot more steps. Okay. Let's go to teams. Now you got to click the screen share. Where's the screen share button. Um, you know, sh show me your screen now, share your, your remote so I can fix it for you. Um, it takes you know, a lot of time and there's on their side, it, it could be, forget about on our side, on their side, there could be a lot of frustration mm -hmm. that's preventing them from being able to articulate the actual problem clearly because they're just so frustrated that it's not working and they start venting about all kinds of other unrelated things that's really not helping you address and, the issue. And a lot of these people really aren't IT savvy. I mean, right. it's, a, it's, it's a tool. They really don't get underneath the, the hood, as we say. Yeah. I don't. I happen to learn a lot of this. I, I'm the only one in my family who isn't an IT wonk. And so I've had to be by default, but a lot of people don't. They're just, they're salespeople. This is a tool. And when they can't make it work, it's like frustration. Yeah, so, we, we had somebody take home a desktop PC and then two days later call and tell us, oh, I don't have internet at my house. How, how can I make this work? <laughs> I'm like, gotta have oh, internet. <laughs> oh my God. Shoot me now. Exactly. That's well, I, I think this whole uh, pandemic is teaching us how we need to learn to work at home. Yeah. I think um, just things that we don't have. I mean, the, the run on webcams in order to test, and it wasn't just Salesforce people. It was other exams, too, because I work for a nonprofit that's a certifying body, and I can tell you our people went to run on, on those uh, cams too. And some people were looking th for them for other reasons. Uh, we weren't ready for that. Um, but I think in the future, people are going to now have some of the skill sets they need and the technology they need to be able to work remotely and to understand how to do it. I think uh, I've read some technologists say this is going to change the way we, we work in the future. It's, it, it, I, could, I can see that already. Headset we ran into. Yeah. And I think aside from the technology, huge, huge piece of it is the communication skills. It, it, it takes a different 
set of communication skills to be able to communicate with people when you're not in the same room. We rely, as human beings, we rely so heavily on facial express expressions and body language. And for a lot of people, by default, they do not, and I'm not trying to call out anyone who doesn't have their camera turned on right now. The, <laughs> by, a lot of people do not have their camera turned on. They feel like, oh, they're not camera ready, or mm -hmm. they, they, it's forget about them being camera ready, the, the, the background, the room of where they're in, they don't want to necessarily show it to anyone they're a little bit embarrassed whatever and that's completely fine and it's totally understandable but at the same time if as human beings we are just hardwired to take in a lot of information through the facial expressions and the body language that element is completely missing and it just makes it a, it makes it that much harder to communicate with others it makes it harder to gather the business requirements it makes it harder to do the troubleshooting it makes it harder to teach people no no, no don't log you don't log a call that way you don't just throw the the uh, the narrative of your phone call into the description field no, no no let me show you it's over here like please this is going to help you. Um, it makes it so much harder to communicate a lot of those things to people when uh, they don't have just the camera is not on. So like you can get a lot of, it's still not exactly the same as being in the same room, but you can get a lot of those elements um, to get as close as possible um, with like something as simple as turning on the webcam. And by the way, you could turn on the webcam, but if you have horrible lighting that people can't see you because the, the window behind you, the, the sun is shining in so bright that you're nothing but a silhouette. It's just as useless. They can see you, you're a talking shadow. <laughs> um, so that could be a challenge too. So there are a lot, a lot of challenges with working remote and we really, we as, as Salesforce admins, we can't ignore them. Like we have to be cognizant of them. And it, it's also difficult for us, especially in an environment like this, where all of our colleagues are remote right now. Uh, and for some people that's the norm and that's fine. Uh, but to how do you then communicate to others who might not be that receptive to feedback on, yeah, why don't you turn your camera on? Oh, by the way, with the lighting, I really can't see you. I have no idea what you're pointing at. Or when you're pointing like this at the screen and you're not clicking share the screen, I have no idea what you're pointing at. So it, all of that comes down to challenges and, uh, and, and um, modifications that we, we, all of us need to make in terms of our communication style. Um, to so that we're just as effective communicating remotely as we are being in the same room and uh, go ahead i was gonna <laughs> say yeah you were talking about the cursor and um zoom has a feature where you over take over somebody's screen and it makes a really big cursor and you they can see your cursor you know, their, your yeah. cursor and your little um arrow so that actually helps um it's one of the few platforms where i've seen that happen yeah no, that's absolutely true. Teams has a nice uh, screen share where you actually get two cursors um, when Ooh. you're doing a remote. And it has your picture on your cursor and their picture on theirs. So it's kind of cool. But the adverse of that is true with the webcam as well is, you know, I used to, a lot of my conference calls were not with a webcam before. And um, there's a tendency that when we run into problems that we understand are, uh, you know, simple to fix for us, expressions of rolling eyes those kind of things you got to tone that all back because uh, now everybody's watching you too and by the way that's probably been the hardest thing for me personally um i tend to i've been called out all the time of that that my face uh i'm very unfortunately transparent in what i'm thinking just on my face without saying a word and yeah the rolling of the eyes like when people do are, the eye roll yeah when people are <laughs> telling you or explaining to you how frustrating it is for them when they're doing something and they're doing it in such an absurd way and you're like why the hell would you do it in the first place and it becomes really really hard to tone that down when the camera is on or at least if you're going if you can't control it at least to be able to speak to it in a way where you're sort of softening it with your words even though they saw those facial expressions and the truth is for better or for worse it's those facial expressions that as i mentioned before that's what simulates the in-person interaction so sometimes i will 
turn to people. And so let's make believe I'm talking to a brand new prospect. And the meeting is like, like we're doing right now, it's through Zoom. And we're, they're explaining to me what it is that they do as a business and how they operate, how they've been using Salesforce and the problem that they're having with Salesforce. And I turn to them and I say, look, if you're comfortable with it, you could use Zoom, go ahead, share your screen, start showing me like what you have so I can understand a little bit better <clears throat> what you're talking about. And they'll, they'll start to show me something like completely crazy. Let's, let's say, for example, um, that they have cust several custom objects to represent people people. So like a custom object for students and another one for alumni and another one for parents and another one for volunteers and another one for faculty members. And I'm sorry, I can't hold back. Yeah, uh, you're, they're going to get some very creative facial expressions from me. I'm, it's just like, yeah. And I'll turn to them and I'll call it out. I'll be like, I'm sorry, I can't help myself. Who created this? <laughs> like, what, what were they thinking? Like, where is this coming from? So I'm sort of I'm not defending my facial expressions. It is what it is. And this is what you get if you're working with me. I'm giving you my real genuine response here. I'm not trying to insult you, but explain to me, you know, uh, the, the justification behind this because uh, yeah, this is a very creative, non-traditional uh, method of implementing Salesforce. So I'll, I'll, I'll talk to it um, without def being defensive about it. Those are some good descriptors. I like them. <laughs> thank you uniquely modified not broken right yes yes I've, I've learned how to find those kind of words and say instead of saying uh instead of using like curse words and uh because i've learned uh and the truth is it's for every salesforce admin needs to understand this that a lot of times as Salesforce admins, we're just not, we're not in control of everything that we ought to be. So a lot of times it's a senior leader in the organization that has system admin permissions and no matter what we say or do, they're not going to give it up. Uh, or there's someone in IT or someone prior to them, someone who's long left the organization and everyone uh, perceived as being highly respected and very knowledgeable. They're the one who set up Salesforce or maybe even another a consulting firm that set up Salesforce. And this is simply how everyone works. And now you're stumbling on something and it's like, holy crap, what were they smoking when they created this? Like, did they have any, did anyone have any Salesforce certifications? Did they, did these, did these people know anything about database architecture when they set this up? And at the same time, we can't necessarily control that. And sometimes we're talking to, it's the CEO who set it up or the CIO who set it up. And uh, like, we sort of have to figure out the appropriate way to turn it into a productive conversation. So yeah, sometimes you have to find those politically correct words and or to pose it in uh, non-threatening questions of, can you explain to me the justification behind the design that we're looking at right now? Like, what is that crazy shit? <laughs> yeah, well, if, if they even know the answer, because some people right. won't know the and, answer. And you know what? It's fine if they don't know the answer. And that's, uh, Phyllis, thank you for bringing that up, because that's actually, that's probably the best case scenario where they don't know the answer. Because if they have an answer and the answer makes absolutely no sense, but they feel very strongly about it and they're proud of it, that you're in a worse situation. But so if they don't know that for you as the Salesforce admin, you could be like, okay, well, if you don't know, so let me tell you, I, I don't know. I clearly don't know because I'm first uncovering this we won't, we won't use the word monstrosity, but this uh, database architecture right now, but this is, like I said before, very non-traditional. This is very unique. This is not fo necessarily following best practices. In order to follow best practices, here's how we would do it. So let's take the analogy that I, uh, the example I gave before where we have a, many custom objects to represent people and to basically call out saying, okay, I understand that you have a lot going on behind this. There's a lot of customization that's been done not only to create each custom object, but a lot of automation and a lot of reports and a lot of list views and a lot of other related objects for each of those and page layouts for each of those custom objects representing people. But the best practice is that everyone that's a human being should be represented in a tab called contacts. And based on attributes of that human being, you can see if they are a student, if they're a an alumni, uh, an alum, if they're a volunteer, if they're a parent, if they're a faculty member, because you could have one person that falls into more than one category. 
And then this way, if that person says, by the way, here's my new email address, you should only have to look for that person once in Salesforce to update their email address. So it's going to take a lot in order for us to fix the custom configuration that we have here today in order to get it to the best practice and to that perfect world. And that's hard. And by the way, it's way harder to do when you're remote. Because I one of, yeah, one of the things I heard you also say, and I want another tangent of this is think about where you're going with your development in the future, right? So we're we're already knowing that in a couple of years we're gonna have both community cloud and partner cloud up and running. And my one of my teams keeps telling us, well, we're gonna create duplicate account records. I'm like, no, you're not, because your admin's gonna merge them on you. And she's going to tell you how you're going to put the data in because down the line, we need it set up the way I'm telling you to set it up or, or things are going to break that you're going to try to do in the future. And For I'm sure. not cleaning it up. Yeah. And a lot of times I'll pose it as a question of what makes you say that we need to create duplicate accounts. And sometimes they'll say something like, well, one team needs to look at the account, but they shouldn't see certain attributes. And the other team needs to see <laughs> the same account, but only see certain attributes. Okay, we can handle that in another way without creating duplicates. Yeah. Record types and page layouts. Yep. And sometimes it's field level security. Yeah. Yeah. All three of above. <laughs> so talk to me. What other struggles do you guys have as it relates to uh, working remote? Physical setup, managing of the Salesforce projects, communication, mental health. I mean, it, it, it's a struggle for a lot of people. It's just not physically interacting with others is a, is a very hard adjustment to make. I'm just enjoying seeing all the faces of other human beings or creatures besides my dogs. I love my dogs, but... Um, but yeah, it's just nice to see other faces. Huh? Yeah, the struggle is real. That's for sure. And the side conversations at work, you know, when you're just, let's say, walking to refill your coffee cup and just seeing a couple of other coworkers and starting to chat. Like, yes, it's, that's a lot harder. It's a lot harder to create those spontaneous conversations when you're working remote, for sure. Because well, otherwise someone calls right. you and it's like, okay, what do you need? I find the, the physical exercise to be hard to fit in. Not, not hard to fit in, not, not that I don't have time for it, but it's hard to force myself to do it because yep. if you go to the office, you have to, well, for me, I, have, I take the train to work because I live in another city. Um, so I walk to the train station. I take the train. I walk to the office. When I stay at home, I walk from my bedroom upstairs about 10 stairs or 15 stairs down to my office and then I sit down again. Yeah. That's exactly the same experience that I'm having. I'm getting like zero exercise because again, I just like you were saying, I just take the train, walk to work. I used to go to the gym at lunchtime, <laughs> come home and then, you know, walking in reverse and it's just like, yeah, I mean, I don't get any exercise. So I have a suggestion on that. Yeah. What my husband and I are doing is for our commute time, we actually are getting on a bike or getting on the treadmill. And for that commute time, that's what we do. Yes. So, you know, we, we're not taking any extra time out of our day. This, the time would have been used otherwise. I know not everybody has treadmills and other things, but right. if you could come up with something to do in your commute time, um, it's worth it. It's working for us. And by the way, in most communities today, you still are able to walk outside so long as you are at least six feet away from other people. So it's okay to walk around the block a couple of times, to walk two, blo two blocks circle radius um, a couple of times. Uh, and uh, honestly, that's a great suggestion. I never thought of what, that one to because most of us automatically think of swapping our commute time for a sleeping time. <laughs> I know, that's, that's I, I know. I've worked from home for many, many, many years. And so I've been saying in a lot of ways, nothing has changed and yet everything has changed. But on the 
health front, I have always felt working from home was healthier for me because I didn't have to commute. So I didn't have to get up quite as early in the morning to fit in exercise. And there's a lot of online physical fitness programs, you know, which we could all rattle them off, but they're not hard to find. So even if you only have a small living room space, it's about being motivated. So that's the hard part is now with this situation, I have found that my normal routine is, even mine, is is waning because um, like I have a child at home now and um, I have actually less work. I, I mean, I work for myself and there's less work because some of my clients aren't working. So I'm finding it hard to maintain a schedule, uh, but I like what you're saying for those of you who commute turning that into um, virtual commute by exercising at home is a good idea. But if people wanted to share their exercise routines in the chat, I think there's great online programs. I'm curious if other people are staying connected with their coworkers or customers or whoever you need to work with now by either having like a daily stand up or have you implemented new scheduled meeting times because you don't see each other every day in the office? We've started doing like, not every day, but a couple of times a week, like um, virtual water cooler chats. So we don't talk about work stuff. We talk about what we did on the weekend or, you know, what we, every time we pick a theme for the meeting. So one time it was everyone had to tell about your favorite cocktail and how to make it or something like that. And so we, we kind of, we didn't do that before. So that's a new Thing that we've started doing which is kind of fun i'll tell you what i do with my team uh and this really is not new because of the coronavirus situation this is what i've always done with my team because everyone on my team is remote within the u.s so i have uh as a team we have uh um an hour time slot, a weekly one hour time slot on the calendar where it's an all team meeting where everyone is basically sharing highlights of what they have going on, the projects that they're working on, the struggles that they might have. This way we can collaborate and, hey, can you help me out with this particular project? Or you might have some skills that, that might give me some ideas on, on how to tackle this one, as well as I have a separate uh, weekly one-on-one -on -one time slot for each member of my team where I, I'm working directly with them uh, to sort of get a debrief on on the projects they're working on or the bandwidth that they suddenly have uh, or the fact that they're overwhelmed and they need a little bit of help, whether it's from myself or from someone else. <clears throat> so I have that uh, going on throughout the course of the week all the time. So like I said, that's not particularly new, but for those of you who are new to working remote, whether you are the manager or the direct report, it's something that you might want to consider or suggest uh, for your team to do something like that because otherwise what happens is you just have the radio silence which can be deafening and you have no idea what's going on you have no idea if everyone is just scrambling to look for another job if everyone's just goofing off if maybe you're the only one who's like i've got nothing to do and nobody's asking me of anything and like uh and everyone else is is uh just spinning their wheels trying to get as much work done as possible so having that collaboration and I'm not at all negating uh, just the non-work related chit chat. Um, just, I think there's a, there's, uh, there are opportunities to have both sprinkled throughout the course of the week, even if it's only once throughout the course of the week. I, th I think I realized one thing that uh, is challenging me um, is actually setting limits on the schedule as well. Cause Last night I looked at the clock at eight o'clock and um, I was really into a flow that I'm, I'm loving it. I'm enjoying what I'm doing with it. And I got some great programming done, but it's eight o'clock and I put in, you know, four extra hours there. So, you know, finding that balance um, can be hard too. I struggle with that too. And my situation is pretty unique because I, I actually am living in Europe and I'm, a freelancer so I have multiple projects multiple clients and I do most of my work remotely back to the US mm -hmm. so time zone coverage with with the US time zones is killing me 
sometimes. Um, I try to block out a couple hours in the evening to do like dinner and kids to bed and that kind of stuff. But there's always a meeting that gets scheduled and, you know, it's hard to, to push those back, especially if they're client meetings. If they were internal, those are easier to push out. But right. And it's, it's particularly hard getting the rest of the family to understand, acknowledge, and not look at you like, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Someone who can't commit to having dinner with the family. Yeah. Like, I thought we're having movie night tonight. Uh, yeah, so. I yeah. think the word is dad. <laughs> right. <laughs> it could be a real struggle. And I, I deal with that all the time, by the way. Uh, and sometimes it's not only client facing, sometimes I'll have it where, um, aside from whether it's I'm exhausted or I've got family plans or family dinner, or whatever it is, and someone on my team is struggling with a particular client who's uh, totally outrageous and asking for nonsensical things. And like, I, I need to, I need to figure it out with my team member of how we're going to resolve it. Um, and that's the only time that that is available for us to uh, collaborate on those issues. So that's a very real and very common struggle. Yeah. Uh, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard. And, and for me too, because, because I'm halfway around the world, basically, like even now I should be sleeping. It's almost one in the morning, but I'm sitting here with you guys just because wow. I, I like the, the conversation. And it's... I was going to say, should I throw you off the meeting? <laughs> Not yet. Maybe in about 15 minutes. <laughs> That's right. In 15 minutes, we'll be done. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I totally get it. Uh, yeah, I sympathize talk. with that, too. Um, I think now more than ever, it's harder to be self-disciplined with schedules. But um, because of what's going on right now and, like, the whole family being home, I need, I need a schedule. Like, I'm a pretty structured person. So for me, it was just having the conversation was helpful and saying, listen, I really need to be able to focus on work stuff from like nine to 12 in the morning. I'll take a break and be part of the family, but then I need like from one to, you know, I just, I need these blocks of time and then I need to stick to that myself as well. And which is hard. So I've decided I need to focus fewer, maybe fewer hours a day on work because of the situation or maybe different hours of the day uh, and then give my family some. And um, I don't know, Anton, and if in your case, you know, you've got clients depending on you, then you can, it's hard to, I think, set boundaries with clients sometimes, but um, the more you do, it sets expectations. And I think from my perspective anyway, I'd love to meet someone who doesn't like having their expectations set appropriately. <laughs> but as long as I know the expectation, I'm good, right? And um, I guess I would encourage you to think, you know, to not that you don't, right? Because we all try, but um, if, if I don't stick to my own structure, I can't expect anybody else to expect that from me. And it is yeah. it's really hard. But just having the conversation sometimes is helpful. Yeah, that's true. And I've had the conversation and I've blocked out the time in my Outlook calendar so that people don't schedule the call, but yeah. they know that it's flexible. So they do it anyway, sometimes. So Why do they know it's flexible? But uh, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, something else I read in case this is interesting for all of you who have to work from home that didn't used to... Um, I was listening to a podcast or something and it was like how to, you know, keep your productivity at home. It was like, have a space where you work and then don't carry your laptop to the living room couch and keep working and actually change your clothes. People joke today about their sleep pajamas and their day pajamas, but if you at least change your clothes, you might feel like you're not working. So Brandon, if you had changed your, like at four o'clock, set an alarm and stood up and like, changed out of your work clothes, you know, and moved to the kitchen. Maybe you wouldn't have kept working, but I find that harder to impose on myself than the whole schedule thing. But another, another good idea is uh, on that note, like my office is next to the kitchen. So mm -hmm. it's not enough just for me to leave the office and go into the kitchen. I actually physically have to shut the door, right. turn, turn off yeah. the computer and close it. Otherwise it's, Otherwise, I'll be cooking, and then I'll just peek in on the laptop and see if somebody messaged me or something. So you really got to, like, shut it down. Yeah. I don't know if anybody else heard the fun fact that uh, apparently Walmart, among other places, they're selling a whole lot of tops 
but very few bottoms <laughs> just for the video. <laughs> yes, I noticed that also recently. One day I, can, I can neither confirm nor deny that I'm in a polo and shorts right now. <laughs> I'm wearing shorts. I have no problem on saying that. <laughs> it's too cold here in Chicago for shorts. Sure. Sorry. <laughs> that, that reminds me of a tongue-in-cheek <laughs> news news article that I read today about <laughs> the local police here had to tell people at a nude beach that they still had to wear their face masks <laughs> because they were in public. <laughs> okay. You clearly live somewhere far more interesting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. We don't really have that going on in New York City, at least not that I'm aware of. No. <laughs> I didn't know we had nude beaches here either, but... <laughs> oh, there you go. Um, so I want to call out something that I think it, it actually touches on a couple of points that we talked about. So I have a dog. And for those of you who have dogs, you might want to, you, you might automatically assume what I'm about to say, but you might want to embrace it. Uh, and so what that, what I'm getting at is if I have a break in between meetings, like a meeting ended, let's say 10 minutes uh, before the top of the hour and my next meeting starts at the top of the hour and all I have is 10 minutes. I don't care if my dog wants to go for a walk or not. I need to move around. Otherwise, I'm going to be in the kitchen eating whatever leftovers I'm going to find. So I take that dog and I go for a walk. And honestly, I have neighbors who make fun of me. They're like, how many times a day do you take that stupid dog for a walk? I'm like, I'm taking the dog for a walk. It's more for me than for the dog. I need fresh air. I need to walk around a little bit. I need to clear my head. I need to get a sense of the world that I'm living in. Is it raining out? Is it sunny out? Is it snowing? Like, what's the deal? What time of day is it? And honestly, that helps me with a lot of different things. It helps me to also just, pro aside from the physical and I'm not going to say it's the equivalent of going to the gym. It's not a 10 minute walk around the block or something, but it, it definitely helps just to move the body a little bit, to change the environment a little bit, to even if it's just for the five or 10 minute walk, to help me mentally process, even if it's not purposeful, um, mentally processing the discussion, the meeting that I just mm. had, or I'm suddenly remembering something else that I needed to do and I completely forgot that I need to do by end of day or something in anticipation of the upcoming meeting, those uh, light bulb moments always happen when I'm walking the dog. Um, so I'm just going to keep walking that dog <laughs> as much as I can. Uh, so that's something that you might want to think about. And honestly, you don't need to have a dog. You don't to just put on your shoes, get your jacket on and go for a walk for a little bit, even if it's that's just five minutes. Thing. It's your Was think it? tank. It's your think tank. Yes. Mine is pacing the driveway. My neighbors think I'm crazy because there I go up and down the driveway and it's literally talking through an issue and it's like, oh, I got it. And then I go back inside. Um, back to the what they were talking about in terms of schedules about being creative. I don't have children. I have an 80-year-old child, um, a dementia patient, and she still struggles with figuring out what re work from home means. She just sees me in front of a computer. And um, so I have to pace out my day to make sure that she has the attention she needs and she doesn't wander off. So I will take longer breaks. And if I have to study for class, sad to say that's a 4.35 a.m. wake up call so I could get that out of the way uninterrupted then it's focus on her breakfast and then start my day. Granted, my work day is a lot longer, but I also have time zones to, to consider. And then it's nap time on class days from like six to eight. And then it's up again at 8.30 to go to class. So you kind of sometimes need to be really creative on how do you get your work done but still handle all of the home issues and responsibilities that you're dealing with at the moment. And, it's hard. Yeah. And sometimes it is take the laptop out onto the back deck so I could watch her and she sees that she has company and, and, you know, and stuff like that. And then give her 30 minutes and it's like, okay, let me go back and focus on what I was doing. So yeah, definitely very, very creative, but the pacing, the driveway, my neighbors are already well-trained on that. Don't interrupt her. She's thinking. You know, Karen, you actually just reminded me when my kids were younger, 
keep in mind my youngest is 16 now, uh, when my kids are younger and um, I was helping to put them to bed, I would try to go to put them to bed with whether it was a mobile phone, a Blackberry, a laptop, so that I was trying to be productive and follow up on because I was stressed about all of those things that I needed to follow up on with work. Um, and God only knows how long it's going to take for this kid to fall asleep, damn it. Um, and there were many, many times where the child fell asleep within 15, 20 minutes and I needed to get that email out. I needed to resolve that issue, whatever it was. An hour later, my wife is like, what the hell took so long? It took this long for her to fall asleep <laughs> no I wasn't hiding I was just on a roll so <laughs> the child's bedroom became my workplace so yes it completely flies in the face of what we talked about before and I completely agree with Beth's recommendation that like you should have the workspace should be the workspace you're mentally um, turning off at a certain point but when you feel that you can't that's the problem when you can't like every room becomes your workspace and your work day never ends. So it's, it's a real struggle. Try to make that the exception, not the rule. Exactly. That's the, that, that's kind of the, yep. the way you have to look at it. You have to kind of work to discipline yourself to make that the exception. I mean, it has to happen once in a while, right. but once in a while, yep. not all the time. Absolutely. Absolutely. And also going back to the uh, putting time for physical fitness, uh, this is something that I struggle with also. When I was working in an actual office, it was way easier for me to have uh, time blocked off on my calendar in Outlook and nobody could schedule meetings with me. And I actually left the office and went to the gym. Turns out there were a lot of my colleagues were also at the gym. Like it wasn't a big deal. Um, sometimes the gym was actually in, depending on physically which building I was working in, the gym was in the, actually in the office. Um, Small, small side story. So when I was working at NBC in Rockefeller Center, um, at different points, I was a member of the NBC gym, which was way more expensive than the local gym in Manhattan, by the way, you would think. And it was the NBC gym, like only for NBC employees, was way more expensive than the local gym. But I leveraged it because it was in the building and I didn't have to deal with putting on a coat on with the snow and the rain, etc. Anyway, uh, so very often I'd be in the gym, like working out next to like a newscaster or something. It was just, it was a very surreal experience. Um, anyway, my point is that working from home, it's it, like you have that slippery slope. Oh, I'll just finish that one other thing. And I'll tell you that very, very often, and this happens to me now where I will change. Sometimes I'll even start the day by putting on my workout clothing and I'm like, oh, let me just get that one email out. And it's three hours later and I'm looking, I'm like, I'm sitting here the whole time in my workout clothing. I still haven't gone to the gym. I didn't even have the towel draped on my shoulder and I'm typing the whole time. It's like, what a loser. Um, so it's the struggle is real is my point. Even if uh, we're not talking about like actually getting the equipment, like even if that's not the issue, even if you're only working, using body weight workouts, even if you already have the, whether it's DVDs or YouTube playlist uh, to do the workouts, even if you're just going to go running, uh, and all you need to put on your sneakers and get outside, uh, it's, a, it's a struggle. It's definitely a struggle. Yeah. What else do you guys want to talk about? I think the one thing that I noticed in interacting with people the, the few times that I have is I understand people are worried. It's a serious situation. Um, everything's topsy turvy, but we also need to keep save room for humor and taking things a little light. Um, one of the first things that got canceled for us was a marketing mind shop that we had with the entire marketing team. And, um, and it was awkward because it was, first time virtual. We didn't know it was in the early stages of this whole mess. And, um, and you could just feel the stress, not necessarily the tension, but the stress of what's happening, what's going to happen. And um, I made a point that every morning we started off with music. Granted, it may not be their cup of tea, but we started with music. And the minute they chimed in, that was the first thing they heard. And it could be everything from like, Jennifer Lopez to whatever, just to have something light. And uh, my boss asked me to come up with a song because our theme was um, rhyme and reason. 
And um, sure enough, I did. I stopped what I was doing because I was in the zone and I was like, you know what? I need a mental break. Let's do this. And it really eased. You can tell the day after and the day after that it wasn't as tense and people relaxed a little bit more and we actually got a whole lot done. So don't forget to, don't forget humor. It's really important, especially as stressed as everybody is with everything that's going on. Karen, I couldn't agree more. And honestly, a lot of times for me, that's how I typically respond to things uh, with humor. Uh, but for a lot of people, um, humor could rub them the wrong way. And mm -hmm. I only see that because sometimes I'm the one initiated introducing humor into the mix. And they're like, how rude and insensitive. Like, do you realize this is a serious issue? I completely realize. Um, so, so depending who, and also if you have the thick skin to deal with it, you can, you'll respond according uh, appropriately. I have no doubt. Um, for some, a lot of times for a lot of people, it's simply calling out what's beneath the surface but on everyone's mind and talking about let's say how stressful the entire situation is of not knowing how long this is going to last and not knowing if you're safe and your loved ones are safe and just calling out the obvious um and yes sometimes it's just having a complete separate distraction like the upbeat music that that can do it so i think there are a lot of different ways to address it and so long as you find the right way that works for the audience the team that you're working with um just yeah do what do what works for you guys and 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 for your own personality but it's hard it's very hard and yes there's aside from the stress there's also the underlying distraction of that i think a lot of people have right now which is the doubt of, am I still going to have this job? Yeah. Or am I going to be struggling with healthcare for a loved one two days from now? And I just agreed to do something by the end of the week. And am I going to be able to deliver on that? So there's, there's a, a lot of that, which is completely understandable. And I think this is probably the first time in most of our lifetimes that we're experiencing something where our colleagues are sometimes even a complete stranger. We're all in the same boat. It doesn't matter what time zone you're in. It doesn't matter where on the globe you live. Like everyone is essentially in the same boat. I can't think of another scenario that it, it was like this. So in a way, I think it actually brings us together in a remarkable way from a humanity perspective. And people are way more understanding of a lot of things. So oh, definitely it's hard. It's definitely hard. But humor, you're absolutely right. It depends on the audience. My team already knows I'm off kilter anyway. Um, but I think that it was welcomed change of pace to kind of help with the uncertainty. Right. So you, are you wearing your hats, Karen? No, they are, they are, they are neatly displayed behind me. I finally got shamed into cleaning the shelf behind me. So see video has its advantages. It looks pretty good. That's where I, that's where I met you at Dreamforce uh, 2018 <laughs> with your big old hat on. <laughs> yep. They are on display behind me. I would show you, but the last time I tried to show with my laptop, the, my coworker got nauseous because I was moving too much. So my office is doing on Fridays from four to five in the afternoon, a virtual happy hour where you can bring whatever drink you want. It can be water, it can be tea, it doesn't matter. But next week's um, uh, challenge is to come dressed up to virtual happy hour. He didn't say how dressed up, so we shall see what comes on the video. Make sure they're Just tops, or you have to wear pants too. <laughs> well, they might ask you to stand up, so you might be prepared to, to show something that you don't want to show. So. Yikes! That could be both entertaining and embarrassing. Yes, true. <laughs> I feel like one of these days I should wear one of my kilts to the meeting, so I can say, "Yeah, no pants day, no pants meeting." That'll hey. do it. Yeah. Would love to see that reaction. <laughs> could challenge everybody to wear their kilts or a skirt or something right it's skirt day if you're not a scots irishman it's just a skirt right 
All right, folks, it's at the top of the hour. Uh, we're going to wrap this up. Thank you, everyone, for joining. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, I'm going to uh, post the recording onto YouTube, and I'll send out the link to everyone so that you all have access to it. Have a great night. Stay Bye. safe. Bye-bye, everyone. Thanks for Bye, having guys. these, David. Bye-bye. My pleasure. Bye-bye.